Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Thursday's Theology. My name is Pastor Jeff, and I'm your host. And today, we are going to talk about the theology found in the story of the God of Thunder himself, Thor. Now, <laughs> I want to pause and, and give you a personal note. Um, I actually didn't like the first Thor movie. Uh, actually, the first three Thor movies are, are kind of disappointing. Uh, Thor Ragnarok, fantastic. I, I want to make sure that you all hear that from me <laughs> first. Uh, Thor Ragnarok is a fantastic movie, but Thor's story arc did not start off well. Um, now, again, this is my own personal opinion, but I thought that out of all the uh, Cinematic Universe characters, Thor had the roughest of the starts. I, I know that Hulk was recast and, and that happened and stuff like that, but Thor, it, it was just a, a really bad start. Uh, plus, Thor himself, to me, in the first movie, looked really, really weird. He looked almost like like plastic, and I, I don't know if you guys agree, feel the same. Uh, if you do, let me know in the comments down below. But anyway, all that's to say, uh, that's not the point of, of this episode. The point is how the story of Thor reflects theology. Now, putting aside his godness, uh, Thor's story actually represents how great power can lead to arrogance. So Thor's story begins with him as the heir to Asgard, and, a, and he himself is a spoiled brat whatever thor wants he gets no matter if it makes sense or not in fact when odin refuses to attack the ice giants thor leads a group of his friends to attack them anyway thor is arrogant thor is impatient and thor is spoiled it is a recipe for disaster you know who else was arrogant impatient and spoiled king saul of the old testament Saul's story does not begin with him as the heir to the Israelite crown. It actually begins with him as a failed shepherd. Uh, we are first introduced to Saul as a goat shepherd who has lost his flock. From the outset of the story, he does not seem to be very kingly. Uh, when Saul was appointed to be the king of Israel, it was because the Israelites wanted an earthly king to lead them into battle and be a tangible presence on the throne. This, in many ways, was a slap in, the, in God's face because from the moment Israel inherited the promised land, God had told them that God would be their king and they would be his people. Israel was supposed to have been led by the eternal God who would protect them, but Israel wanted a king like the other nations. So in the, in the book of 1 Samuel, we see this interaction between Israel and Samuel, the priest of God uh, and God. So it says in chapter 8, uh, verses 6 through 9, But when they said, Give us a king to lead us, this displeased Samuel. So he prayed to the Lord. And the Lord told him, Listen to all that the people are saying to you. It is not that they have that they have rejected. It is not, sorry, it is not you that they have rejected, but they have rejected me as their king. As they have done from the day I brought them out of Egypt until this day, forsaking me and serving other gods. So they are going, so so they are doing to you. Now listen to them, but warn them solemnly and let them know what the king will reign over them will claim as his rights. So the Israelites wanted to be like the other nations around them. So when they asked for a king, it was a rejection of God. So instead of ignoring their request, God granted it, but he warned them what would happen if they were to have a king over them. This is where Saul comes in. Samuel was told by God that Saul was to become their king. So Samuel went to go find Saul, anointed him, which basically means that he was set apart for kingship, and established him, Saul, as the first king of Israel. So things started off really well. Uh, Israel was victorious against their enemies, and Saul served God. They wouldn't stay that way, however. Once Saul started to experience success, his arrogance started to grow. Much like Thor, Saul had tasted power and was eager to have his fill. Saul became impatient, spoiled, and arrogant. Whenever we are entrusted with power, it can very easily warp our minds. In other words, power can easily corrupt us and cause us to use it for our own advantage. When we look at the story of Thor, we can see this at play. He goes against the wishes of Odin because he thinks he knows better and wants to make a name for himself as Asgard's mightiest warrior. Thor's arrogance gets to be so bad that Odin takes away his ability to wield his ham hammer, Mjolnir. Thor's whole story is one of learning how to become a humble leader who works for the good of his people and not for himself. 
Unfortunately, Saul's story didn't turn out the same way. In Saul's story, we can see how power led to arrogance. It was the that arrogance that led to Saul's downfall. Long story short, he went against God's wishes and he chased after his own desires and it cost him the crown. God took away his blessing of Saul and gave it to a shepherd boy named David. Now that's a, another story for another time, but suffice it to say that arrogance can topple even the most powerful of kings. Saul's story doesn't have a happy ending like Thor's does. The reason being is that one of them learned how to wield their power humbly and the other didn't. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how Thor's story reflects a deep theology of arrogance and power. So thanks again for joining us for this week's episode of Thursday's Theology. My name is Pastor Jeff, and I'm your host. And remember, theology doesn't always have to be difficult. It is simply the study of who God is. Take care. We'll see you next week.